Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Pethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down, and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now confess that he is gracious, and that his mercy endureth forever. Open me the gates of righteousness, that I may go into them and give thanks unto the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter into it. I will thank thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The same stone which the builders refused is become the headstone in the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Help me now, O Lord, O Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have wished you good luck, ye that are of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord who hath showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, yea, even unto the horns of the altar. 
Thou art my God, and I will thank thee. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endureth for ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. <clears throat> the Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. <clears throat> the Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. <clears throat> I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you, Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen.
reading from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Last Sunday afternoon, Holly and Sarah and I went horseback riding at a little farm in Litchfield, Connecticut. One of the fenced pastures on the farm had two mother and cult pairs. One cult born two days before, one the night before. It was truly breathtaking to see these beautiful animals, to watch one of them nurse. I had never seen a cult nurse before. And then to see the astonishing sight of both little cults actually galloping, even the one who was less than a day old. When I climbed onto the big horse who had been chosen for me to ride, I wondered when the cults would be ridden for the first time and wondered what that process was like on this farm. Then I came home and started thinking about Palm Sunday opened up the gospel, and of course there was the story of the cult that had never been written. All of us people of faith have had experiences like this. A friend of mine used to say that there are no coincidences, only confluences. Indeed. The whole story was so much more vivid for me, having literally just seen the cults and ridden a horse myself. I had never before thought about the effortlessness with which Jesus seems to ride the cult. But now I realized that it was really a rather unlikely scene. A grown man riding a cult never ridden before? It seemed clear that the Spirit wanted me to notice this part of the story in particular. As I studied the text, it became clear that this image of Jesus effortlessly riding the never-ridden colt is exactly in keeping with the way Mark tells the Palm Sunday story. Matthew, Luke, and John all have fairly close parallels. Only Mark's, though, has Jesus ride along the road leading into Jerusalem, which he is doing for the first 10 verses of our story, enter Jerusalem and go into the temple, which he does in verse 11, look around and leave. Nothing happens. He returns with the disciples to Bethany for the night. Remember that Mark is the oldest of the four Gospels. We've been noticing as we've made our way through Mark the very special immediacy of his Gospel. There's a pronounced sense of being close to the action. We feel the cult, the crowd, the cloaks, the leafy branches. And we feel the sense of anticlimax when Jesus enters the temple. Again, nothing happens. In Matthew's account, 
The whole city is in turmoil when Jesus enters. And his encounter with the money changers happens right away, as does the grumbling of the chief priests and scribes. In Luke, he weeps over the city, then has a similar encounter in the temple. John leaves out the money changers, but the grumbling happens right away in his account, too. But in Mark, nothing happens at all that first evening in Jerusalem. And as the oldest gospel, this is probably the most historically accurate version. Even the crowd that shouted and spread branches as Jesus rode the colt seems in Mark to be as much caught up in the spirit of the coming Passover festival as it was excited about Jesus. As the commentator Daryl Bach says of his riding towards Jerusalem, Jesus' act was modest and symbolic. It would have been just a part of the tumult that pilgrims would have been generating with its significance easily missed. Only the next day does Jesus return to the temple for his encounter with the money changers, the chief priests, and the scribes. So the way Mark tells the story, Jesus makes his symbolic messianic entrance, surveys the scene, and leaves. He does not manipulate the enthusiasm of the festival crowd and go straight to the temple to cause a sensation. If this is the way that Jesus really did it, and biblical scholarship clearly points to this, what does it tell us? Think back to the never ridden colt and the fact that I had never noticed before how remarkable this part of the story was. It's a nuance that became clear to me when the time was right in my own life during this particular Lenten season. The effortlessness with which Jesus rode the colt was done simply and modestly like the rest of his behavior in Mark's Palm Sunday. Jesus did not manipulate. He showed who he was, but wanted those who encountered him to come to their own conclusions about him, which is exactly what he wants in his relationships with each of us. Lent is nearly over now, At the beginning of Lent, we embraced disciplines to open up space in ourselves for God. We have worked to clean out our own interior temples to show, to allow us to see Jesus more clearly. It is time for us to ask now, what have we seen? In today's gospel, we see a Messiah who wants us to choose him. He wants us to know him as our Lord, not because we have been manipulated, but because we have seen for ourselves what is true. He wants us to retreat with him to Bethany and enter Jerusalem with him as a disciple, not as part of a frenzied crowd. He wants us to exclaim with Paul that we understand that Jesus did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. And he wants us then and only then to sing that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus will never manipulate you, but he will save you if you let him. May this Holy Week be one in which we see him for who he is. Watch for the man 
on the never ridden colt and think about exactly what and who you are seeing. Amen. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace.
I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Geraldo Sequera, Osvaldo Sequera, Jorge Cardoso, and Charles King, Jr. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now, and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.